This is a reply to a Muslim spoken word piece titled The Meaning of Life. Let's see what you have to say. What are we doing here? And where are we gonna go? It's like we just woke up one morning and then it's welcome to the show. No, it's not like we all just wake up one morning, but I won't nitpick that trivial introduction. I'll just chalk it up to poetic license. I guess your point is that you're personally at a state where you're contemplating life. Got it. Move on. Don't ask any questions. Just go with the flow. Make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke. Copy everything you see on the TV from the hairstyles to the clothes and don't think too often. Just do exactly as you're told. I would certainly agree that in much of modern society, we've placed those who make it into mainstream media and entertainment as successful, and that as a human species, we have holistically learned to imitate and emulate those of success in an effort to achieve or resemble achievement for ourselves. I don't think that you're doing much in the way of answering the meaning of life by observing that, though. And if you ever get confused, then just turn towards the alcohol. You still hear your thoughts? Then just turn up the radio as you learn to live a lifestyle of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. There are plenty of other outlets for people's confusion than drugs, sex, and rock and roll. Sometimes when people are confused about life, they write about it like you have, or read philosophy, or talk to loved ones, go camping, work out. The list goes on. Different people deal with life's confusion in different ways. And for the record, drugs, sex, and music are not exclusively harmful things, nor are they exclusively used as a dark distraction from the confusion of life, which, spoiler alert, you later insist can only be answered by reading the Quran. But in all honesty, I just need to know, is there more to the cycle than growing and getting old, living and dying just to leave behind a happy home and a whole lot of property that somebody else is going to own? I just really need to know before the casket's closed. Yes, there is more to life than living and growing old, if you're fortunate enough to grow old, that is. On a tombstone where they inscript a person's date of birth and date of death, it's not those two dates that really matter, it's the dash between them that does. What matters is what that person chose to value and devote his or her life toward. If that person valued money and power, then that's what mattered for that person. And that's what that person's life was about. If that person valued family and community, then for that person, that's what life was about, and so on. If you choose to value your faith and devote massive chunks of your time and energy into worshiping your God, then for you, that's what matters. But there is no objective thing that life must be about for all people. And if you point out that you think your holy scripture is really cool later as evidence of the contrary, I'm not going to be impressed. Cause I'm not willing to gamble with my soul Nor am I ready to take any chances These are just simple life questions And I'm just searching for some answers Well there's no evidence to suggest that you have a soul to gamble with So I wouldn't say that you're gambling with anything If your point is that by not devoting your life to the worship of your God You may be running the risk of losing your soul Then you're still making that gamble by worshipping your one God in your one way the hundreds of thousands of separate combinations of proposed gods and means of worship throughout human history separate from your one god and method are stacked well against your favor in the odds department of you getting it right. And I have to tell you, when he finds out you prayed to Allah five times a day and never burned a single ram his honor, Zeus is going to be pissed. Like, what are we doing here? And what is our purpose? I answered that already. It's pretty much up to you. How did we get here and who made us so perfect? You got here because your mother and father procreated, as did theirs, and so on, over a long series of generations. As for perfection, humanity is nowhere near perfect. The human body has a lot going for it, but to call it perfect is laughable. Our reproductive parts are located right next to those for waste disposal. Our joints and feet are structured in a way that's completely out of whack for bipedal walking structure, causing knee and lower back pain as we reach to mid and late life. The human birth canal is far too small in proportion to the child that passes through it, making the process of giving birth highly painful and often dangerous without sophisticated medical procedures and drugs. Thanks, science! And apart from the brain, pretty much every body part that we have 
Other members of the animal kingdom have a better version than we do. So no, nothing made us perfect. We are nothing but the most recent model of a species making adaptions every generation driven by natural selection in our current environment. And what happens once we go or is this world all really worth it? When you go, life is done. Game over. My guess is that you feel the same way after you die as you did before you were born. Non-existent. I'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable, but I personally have a strong preference for truth over comfort. Questions we don't answer because apparently we don't really have to. There's no purpose to this life and our existence is merely natural. Then in that case, please let me ask you, did you create yourself or was it somebody else who had fashioned you? Dude. We covered this. My parents created me. Suggesting that either I created myself or God must have done it is a pretty clear example of a false dichotomy. Cause you're a being that's impeccable, faultless and unparalleled. You're a product of supreme intelligence and I'm merely being rational. Not even close. Being arguably the most intelligent species known to exist on our one planet does not make us beings of supreme intelligence. Having an appendix in our body that serves no modern purpose other than to put us at risk for harm is a fault. Our poor inability to escape from instinctive drives of selfishness and insecurity and other territorial behaviors is a fault, suggesting that we must be some superior model of life designed by some even more superior god because of how great you short-sightedly perceive our species to be is not only irrational but it's arrogant and foolish too for there isn't a camera on this earth that can come close to the human eye nor a computer that can compete alongside the human mind and if the whole world was to come together we wouldn't be able to create a single fly so many signs, yet we still deny. The fact that human beings haven't been able to mechanically replicate the biological features of our own species is not evidence that a god must have done it. It wasn't until the 1900s that humans scratched the surface of flight. At best, we've had a few centuries of what can pass for scientific development, all of which has been strictly limited by available resources, fundings, and the limitations of that human mind you just bragged about. Nature, however, has had tens of thousands of generations of constant evolutionary advancement to develop things that are seemingly best suited to survive and reproduce in their environments, with no human limitations to constrain it. Talk about comparing apples to oranges. A science tries to justify that all this could come from none, when it's a simple sum, zero plus zero plus zero cannot possibly ever give you one. Yeah, that's not how science works. Um, science doesn't select a conclusion, then endeavor to prove or justify it. That's more religion's cup of tea. Science makes the most accurate and objective observations to create facts that it can, and works arduously to accurately conclude what those facts culminate to explain. So from where did all this order come? But everything has its origins, a maker, a creator of its own. I mean, the only reason you're watching this video is because somebody had to press upload. No, all things that exist do not require a maker or a creator. Matter and energy, for example, have been proven impossible to create or destroy. Something can also come about by a cause without a maker or a creator, such as the composition of sedimentary rocks or coral reefs, from natural coincidental combinations of the right materials and pressures. Pointing out that a YouTube video we're watching has an uploader does not prove that all things which exist must require a superior creator to do so. So we can believe in the Big Bang, but I'd rather believe in he who caused it to explode. Well, the man who's originally responsible for the Big Bang Theory also believed in God. It's not like you're the first person to believe in your God and accept the scientific explanation for something by amending your acceptance of the scientifically understood explanation with, but God made it happen. Allah, the creator of everything along with every single soul. The ever-living, the master, the only one who is in control. Unlike his creation, beyond our imagination, and no, he's not a man, nor does he have any partners in association. He's on his own. And no, he did not ever leave us alone. 
if his properties are beyond our imagination, then how can you describe them so thoroughly? How do you know he's the only one in control or eternal or master? He's not my master or in control of me. Also, if he's on his own, meaning apart from us, then how can you immediately follow up that claim by saying that he never left us alone? Just like every manufacturer, he left us with an instruction manual. The Quran and Islam, and I'm sorry to jump to conclusions, but it's the only one possible. No, not everything that's manufactured comes with an instruction manual. I'll certainly admit that I haven't read the Quran from cover to cover, nor can I read Arabic to appreciate it, and what I'm told by Muslims is flawless, beautiful verse. However, that which I have read translated into English reads nothing like an instruction manual, nor does the Bible for that matter. It seems that if our Creator wanted me to have those divine instructions, he would have placed them somewhere other than an ancient book. Like, maybe he would have simply encrypted them into my mind in the same way that I have natural genetic instincts and abilities. A child doesn't have to read a book written in a language he doesn't speak to know the difference between pain and comfort. It's hardwired into his brain and nervous system because it's essential to survival. Why isn't the Quran there too? Or would that have been impossible for your almighty creator to include in our perfect design? The only definition of God is the one and only supreme being. It's logical. A book with zero contradictions, with miracles that are both scientific and historical. All revealed over 1400 years ago. Yeah, that's not true, nor is it proof. There are multiple definitions of God throughout history, all of which have their own proposed proofs through oral traditions and texts. All have just as much validity as the God you worship, I'm afraid. One need only search the internet for Quran contradictions to find plenty of contradictions and errors, but it's typical confirmation bias on your part here to count the things that the Quran appears to have gotten right and ignore the things that it happens to have gotten wrong, passing those off as figurative or metaphoric. It's no different than Christians doing the exact same thing with their Bible. And as I said, I haven't read a significant fraction of the Quran, so I'm not going to harp on contradictions others have pointed out, but let's grant your claim and say it has zero contradictions. The children's book, The Cat in the Hat, is a well-written story with zero contradictions too. That doesn't make it any less fictional. Like the detailed description of the human embryo. The descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. To the mountains as pegs holding firm the earth below. And the two seas that don't mix in a complete separate flow. To the planets in orbit, alternating night and day as they stay in flow. The expansion of the universe and the creation of everything from H2O. To the stories of the past and the preservation of Pharaoh. To identifying the lowest point in the land where Persia defeated Rome. The gushing fluid that created man in the glands between the ribs and the backbone. And we'll bypass the silliness of you rhyming flow with flow, and I'll refer you back to what I said before about confirmation bias. Also, these claims you're granting the Quran to have have been interpreted to fit what science and history has demonstrated. The wording isn't literal or scientific in its nature. Gushing fluid, for example, is by no means specific. And for the record, the gushing fluid that I would use to reproduce is located between my thighs, not between my ribs and backbone. Modern readers have found ways of reading it in such a way that suggests vague figurative language must be metaphoric for what, that which is factual. Meanwhile, all the parts of the Quran that claim the sky or heavens are tangible things above us, which are held in place by Allah without need of physical suspension, we don't really pay attention to those. No, we, we know that there's no tangible sky to be held, though there does appear to be a massive black or blue sheet high above us. We know that there isn't. It won't become flimsy or cleft asunder at the time of reckoning either, because it's not a tangible thing. The stars won't come falling down on us in those days either, as they aren't suspended directly above us in a way capable of falling, even if they appeared that way before we understood what the stars were. 
I suppose that's all just metaphor for something else though, right? And not a word has changed, it's still the same, so please explain how all this was known over 1400 years ago to a man who couldn't read or write as he would recite whatever the angel spoke. How about you prove to me that one man who couldn't read or write is responsible for suddenly knowing and reciting every word of the Quran 1400 years ago? Prove that it wasn't composed by multiple authors who claim that one person wrote it. Extrinsically prove to me any of its intrinsic origin claims. It doesn't seem your miraculous prophet has any more proof going for his epiphany than Joseph Smith has for coming up with the Book of Mormon. And if you still don't believe, I don't. Please try to come up with something that's even close. But you can't, so we took God as a mockery and his messengers as a joke. I'm confused as to what you're asking me to come up with. You need a clear explanation for the origin of the planet? Ask a cosmologist. You need a clear explanation for the origin of the human species? Ask a biologist. You need another ancient text that is full of metaphors which his followers claim to be scientifically proven and having divine origins as yours? Go to your local bookstore and browse the entire religion section. Muhammad could not read or write! How's somebody who can't read or write gonna start a religion? Dismiss the scriptures as legends and tales of the ancient folk as we live life according to our whims, desires, and hopes. Saying this life is the only home we will ever know. We will live, then die, then simply turn to bones. Yo, lo! Correction, after the grass dies, the rain arrives and it regrows, and Allah promises to do the same thing to your very soul and bring you back from your very fingertips to your toes. The fact that plants have seasonal stages of dormancy does not prove that humans live again after they die, even if the Quran says it will happen. In fact, you may want to slide that Quran claim over to the not scientifically verified column. As the all-seeing supreme being watches us so close, and we are surely being tested in our wealth, our health, and our self, and everything that we've been blessed with. So believe, for we will surely be resurrected erected and be brought back to our Lord in account for every single deed. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for your own sake. You better not sin. You better not drink. You better not eat pork. Better not think because Allah is coming to town. As he hands us our books and orders us to read. From the bad to the good and everything in between. You yourself are sufficient for your own accountability. So I agree because I am the only one who needs to hold myself accountable for what I do within the legal bounds of the society I'm living in. If I break those laws, it's fair that I be held accountable by society for them, but I certainly don't need cosmic justice to hold me accountable for my actions. Oh, don't be mad at me! You were the one who thought he wouldn't come back to me! I gave you a whole life long to search after me! But you were busy in all that which was temporary, so- Earlier in this video, you directly claimed that your creator never left us alone. So how are we in trouble for not believing that he would ever come back? I thought you said he never left. I think Occam's razor slices more cleanly on the side of him never having been here in the first place. Oh, read and glad tidings to all those who believed. And if you disbelieve, read. And don't let that day be the first day you find out what your life really means. Read. If every other religion insisted the claim that you just made about their God being the one true God, and the only way that you could find the true purpose of life would be to read their holy scriptures, especially in their native language, then would you? Could you? I didn't think so. I also have to point out that you titled this piece The Meaning of Life, but you never really scratched the surface of what life is supposed to mean. You're suggesting here that the meaning of life is... I don't know, Islam is true? Are you claiming that life is just a preliminary stage wherein if we don't behave ourselves according to the rules of the religion, then we'll never get the good stuff after we die? 
That sounds too much like a cult for me. I'll go on determining the meaning of life on my own for myself. Thank you.